When we talk about regret at the end of your life, how you're gonna feel about your life, I can 1,000% guarantee you that how you feel about your life at the end of your time here is going to come down to your ability to cultivate discipline. That was all I did. I trained, I ate, I sleep, I, I studied. That's just and all my mental now? focus was like lasered on that thing that was doing nothing else. I wouldn't go to the movies, I wouldn't go to dinner if I got home after 11 because I got to be in a bed at 11. That was the regime that I lived for, for many years and that's why I was able to beat other people that maybe could be argued they were more gifted than me, but they weren't willing to do that. So that's, that's what it's all about. Any kind of sport is the same thing. What separates the guy that's first from second from third or whatever? You know, you all got certain physical characteristics that, that help you in your sport and so on. So you're all gifted. At that. So what can separate the guy from first and second and third? It's, it's all up there. That's, that's the key. What do you do when somebody's not there watching you? What do you do when you have to either do what it is you know you're supposed to do without somebody there to supervise you or you get to take the playoff because no one's going to know the difference? Those are the things that make up success. And that's not motivation. That's discipline. The set, the real sets, I call them, we're going to go to absolute failure and even beyond with force reps, with assistance reps, maybe extra negative reps. This is um, something most people neglect when they lift weights. They think, you know, I've lifted it. All right, boom, let it go down. I've lifted it. But they're, they're neglecting the lowering part of the weight, the negative. So I get people to really slow that down so you're taxing that part as well. And even at the end of the set, on some exercises with machines where it's practical, so you, you know, you can't curl anymore physically on the positive, on the contraction but your strength on the lowering is greater. So if you did curls and you failed, I could lift the weight to the top for you and you could lower it down for probably another three reps. So my thing is I exhaust everything. You can't lower it, you can't lift it. It's total failure. If you do that once on an exercise, then time to move on. How did you develop your mindset? Was that something that you always had? Or was it something that you developed as you were training? I think it's something I already already had and uh, I kind of left home when I was 16 so I was out on my own on the street and uh, you know you're either going to get smart and you know look after yourself or you're going to fall down there's nobody there to catch me so that was there from a, from an early age I think and uh, I was just very determined to do this thing that I felt I could be good at in order to change my life and change you know uh, the projection of my life, uh, the people around me. Um, I was grew up on a housing estate in the UK. I had no education. I was in a jail when I was 18. So I had all that. That was, you know, the people around me. I was like, I didn't want part of that future. I wanted to do something else, and I got this thing that I was good at. So I'm going to take it and run. With it, you know? What is it that causes muscle growth? What is it? And um, he found it was the intensity of exercise. And then there was another bodybuilder, Mike Mensah, who went to compete in the Mr. Olympia, won the Mr. Universe. He took those principles and he used them. Um, so I read all this stuff and it was very logical. You know, it made sense. And then I tried it out in the gym and it worked in the gym. And if I trained more often or if I did more in the gym, my progress would slow down or it would stop. As soon as I cut back and I made the workout shorter and more intense, um, my progress went. So it was. For me, it was pretty early on I learned how to train properly. And that's why I was competing. I competed in a world championship after 18 months training, which is pretty much unheard of. That is pretty much unheard of. Now, when you say shorter, more intense workouts, how did you regulate that? Like, that is, that's a huge issue with martial artists, is overtraining. They want to do more work than everybody else. They want to work harder than everybody else. And they wind up breaking their body down and showing up for the fight exhausted. Overtraining is a big thing, yeah. And if you see the the process for muscle growth is you go in the gym and you put stress on the muscle. If you put stress that it's not used to, then it's going to react. You're going to get growth. But you need to recover from that first. You don't go to the gym and grow and then recover later. That's that's not the way it works. You go if you you know you give some your body some stress it's not used to, you'll get a reaction. But before you get the reaction, you have to recover. So if you're not allowing enough time to recover, you're just 
I use this analogy at, at the seminars I do. It's very simplistic, but it gets the point across. If you get a bit of sandpaper and you rub it across the palm of your hand and it's kind of bloody, if you leave it and let it heal up, what's going to happen? The skin's going to develop back a little bit stronger, a little bit thicker than before because it wants to protect against that stress. So that's the process. But if you go and you make your hand bloody, and before it's healed up again, you go and rub it again, What's happening? You're not really getting anywhere. You're just gonna have a bloody hand, you know. Yeah, so. you think you're being tough, but you're actually just being silly. Yeah, and it's uh, why are you going to the gym? Right. I'm going to the gym to get results, so I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get results. And if it means training 30 minutes once a week, or it means training 10 hours a day every day, whatever it takes, I was willing to do it, and I would have done it. But um, training 10 hours a day is not gonna build your muscle. It's just gonna burn out. So I was doing average 45, 50 minute workouts, probably four times a week. That really? Was, that was that's it. it? That wow, was it. That's that was incredible. It. And everybody says, oh, that's it. Well, I write on a piece of paper, what is that? That's nothing, man. I'm like, okay, but come and do it. Come and do it and tell me if you want to do more when we're finished.